So let's take a look at our tale of the tape for this. Our opening matchup, you see Easter three years older than Ryan Martin, the height and the reach advantage in favor of the Toledo native. Also, let's take a look at our rules momentarily as we observe the rules for tonight's event. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Before the end of the fourth round, no decision after the end of the fourth round. You go to the scorecards, fight is official after four rounds have been completed and only the referee can stop the fight. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round. So Ryan Martin and Robert Easter Jr. are set to do battle in Ohio Ladies showdown. Ladies and Jimmy. gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Fight Sphere. From the Mohegan Sun Arena here in Uncasville, Connecticut, Premier Boxing Champions presents a big night of action brought to you by TGB Promotions and Showtime. Introducing our three judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Connecticut, Tom Carasone. Also from Connecticut, Frank Lombardi. And from New York, John McKay. Introducing our third man of the ring, the referee in charge of the action, Harvey Dock. All right, fans, here we go. Super lightweights in the ring, scheduled 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first on my left, he is fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, originally from Ohio, now fighting out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. He weighed in at 139 and one half pounds, his fine record stands at 24 wins, one loss, with 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the respected former amateur standout tonight making his Showtime debut, introducing Ryan Blue Chip Martin. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with white trim, Hailing from and representing his home of Toledo, Ohio. He weighed in at 139 and three quarter pounds. His record stands at 22 wins, one loss and one draw with 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the current WBA number five ranked lightweight in the world. Introducing the former IBF lightweight champion of the world, Robert Easter Jr. Once again, a referee in charge, Harvey Dock, now to give instructions. boxes trunks are good we went over the instructions earlier as a reminder obey my commands at all times protect yourself at all times touch them up good luck to you it's our opening matchup ray flores here in mohegan sun resort and casino they call it the fight sphere no fans in attendance due to covid 19 but hopefully that will start to change in a few months we miss every single one of you but wherever you're joining us around the world we thank you so much as Robert Easter Jr. and Ryan Martin get set to match up in the super lightweight division. Robert Easter Jr., former IBF lightweight champion of the world. He went ahead, won the title against Richard Comey back on September 9, 2016, defended it on a few occasions, a win over Luis Cruz, Dennis Shafikov, and Javier Fortuna. And he would relinquish that title on July 28, 2018 against Mikey Garcia at Staples Center. So Harvey Dock, the man in charge. This is a 12-round matchup. Good jab by Robert Easter Jr. Calls himself TBT, the bunny team. Known as the Bunny, he's been labeled that throughout the course of his entire professional career. Robert Easter Jr. has been a pro since November 10th, 2012. His draw against Rancis Bartholomew and the loss to Mikey Garcia are the only blemishes on his resume. There's a nice right hand of the body by Ryan Martin. 
jab there by a man known as Blue Chip as we're just over the halfway point of our first round. Keep that right hand up. Good jab there by Robert Easter Jr. Double jab by Martin. They both exchanged jabs. Robert Easter Jr. says that he knows that Martin will be a little bit more charged up due to the fact that he beat him handily in the amateurs. Ryan Martin said he had a feeling all along that their paths would cross at some point in the professional ranks. There's a left hook there by Robert Easter Jr. Under a minute to go here in our opening stanza. Good jab on the top of the head by Easter. Robert Easter Jr. is trained by his father. Double jab there by the Toledo native. Now Martin looking to close the distance. Robert Easter Jr. ties up. Harvey Dock letting them fight out of the break. Final moments of the first. There's a right hand by Martin to conclude round number one. Every time you, do, every time you shoot the jab to him, he ain't doing nothing, okay? So go to him with your jab. All right, two or three of them. You got to shoot with some jabs up. Bop, 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 bop. Okay. Okay? All right. All right. Did you rest the first time? And my head go by. Okay, listen. Step to him with the jabs. Let's get everybody back to that body. Come on. Can I get that? Huh? That's it. Two standing up, man. Use them legs. You gotta be lower. Okay? He, he throws. You gotta answer right back. You gotta be first. Seconds out. If you ain't first, you gotta be second. Come on. Well, you heard the trainer of Ryan Martin tell him you have to throw first. You can't be second. As we are into round number two, this one is scheduled for 12. It is great to be with all of you for this edition of Premier Boxing Champions. Nice stiff jab there by Robert Easter Jr. Good jab that snaps back the head of Ryan Martin. Wake up! We'll see if Martin tries to close the distance and starts to be more active. There's the right on the abdomen by Martin. Martin, three years younger than Robert Easter Jr. Easter has been away from the ring since October of 2019, but he said that he did do some work during this COVID-19 pandemic with his father. And now they tie up and Easter goes barreling into Ryan Martin. Minute ten has come off the clock here in the second. Ryan, let's close in with that jab. Good point. Come on, Ryan. Let's There's a right on, hand on the top of the head of Ryan Martin by Easter. Punches landed and thrown. Six of forty for Ryan Martin for Easter. Eleven of forty for a 27% connect percentage, 15% connect percentage for Ryan Martin. There's a nice jab there by Ryan Martin. 70 seconds remaining here in the second. Martin looking to blast away on the body of Robert Easter Jr. Under a minute to go here in the second. It's been an eventful fight when it comes to the jabs coming out by both guys. Nice jab there by Robert Easter Jr. Steps in with the jab followed by the right hand. Easter is letting his hands go a little bit more. Pops in with the right hand. 
Coming forward though is Ryan stop, Martin. Stop, stop. Those were low on his grip. Keep him up. He warned Ryan Martin about keeping his punches up. Double jab followed by that right hand by Easter. Robert Easter Jr. looks sharp here in the second round. As Ryan Martin dealing with the jabs and the length of Robert Easter Jr. And that ends the second. Taking a look at some of the work here. There's that nice right hand that popped Robert Easter Jr. And then he ducked underneath the right hand. And we'll take a look at it again. The jab, and then we're going to see the... Oh, we're going to see the right hand there by... There's the right hand. And then gets underneath. That is hard to do. If you've ever tried boxing or lacing up a pair of gloves and hitting the pads, even that's difficult to do. Robert okay. Easter Jr. did it with ease. Seconds out. Keep them hands up and don't go. You heard the father of Robert Easter Jr. tell him he can't do nothing with you. We're on to the third round. This one is scheduled for 12. Still to come, Adrian Broder will match up against Giovanni Santiago. That is coming up in our main event. As Ryan Martin looking to close the distance. Punch is thrown and landed. Easter, 11 out of 45, a 24% connect percentage. Martin, 6 of 40 for a 15% connect percentage. That is exactly what Martin did in the first round and also similar to that of what Easter did in the first round from a connect percentage standpoint. Actually, Martin landed in identical. He's landed 12 total punches through the first two rounds. Six in round one, six in the second. So numerically, you are seeing how the fight is playing out as a minute has come off the clock here in the third. We'll see if Robert Easter Jr. can continue to pop the jab and unload that right hand. Now they tie up as we are nearing 100 seconds to go in our third round. There's a nice left hook to the body by Robert Easter Jr. Nice jab by the Toledo native. Ryan Martin is trying to chase him down. But Easter boxing well. You know what's interesting is that Robert Easter Jr. has underrated boxing skill, but he has shown a propensity to want to get involved in these toe-to-toe -to -toe and these battles. He did it against Adrian Granados because he injured his elbow in the third round, which is why he had to fight on the inside against Granados. And he said at that point, he realized, look, I just got to let my hands go because this guy's not going to stop. And he was able to get a unanimous decision victory. Now they're close distance here. They are wrestling, jockeying for position. And Harvey Dock will separate them finally. There's a left hook to the body by Easter. Martin looking to unload. Well, here's the inside fighting that we all thought Easter was going to try to implore at some point during the fight. But Martin hammering away as well. These are why you do those so many rounds on the heavy bag and you pound away. Which man's going to be able to get the advantage? A nice chopping right hand moments ago by Ryan Martin. Final stages of this, our third round. Time! And that concludes the third. There's that left hook to the body by Robert Easton Jr. followed by the right hand over the top. And then 
Here's this body work by Ryan Martin. But you got to do it here, kid. You got to do it here. You let this be funky. It's just the bullshit, man. Let's go, kid. Come on, you better than this. Use that jab. Use them legs. You're too stand up. Second jab. Use that jab. And that hook. Let's get that hook going. Let's get the hook going. The, the corner of Ryan Martin said you're better than that. I think they're seeing that he's getting outworked by Robert Easter Jr. So they're trying to light a fire under Ryan Martin. And understandably so. We're on to the fourth round. This one is scheduled for 12. Robert Easter Jr., former IBF lightweight champion of the world. Ryan Martin, his low loss, came in at the hands of Josh Taylor back two and a half years ago in November of 2018 in the quarterfinals of the World Boxing Super Series. We'll see if Ryan Martin can start to get some momentum going. Punches landed and thrown through three Easter 35 of 127 for a 27% connect percentage. Martin 23 of 125 in 18% connect percentage. There's a jab right to the body by Ryan Martin. A left uppercut by Easter. Quick, 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 quick. They both are wrestling. And Harvey Dock separated them. Double jab by Ryan Martin. And there's an overhand right by Ryan Martin. A jab right to the abdomen of Robert Easter Jr. To the abdomen of Ryan Martin. They both are in close distance. And Harvey Dog once again separates them. Well, they've been picking up. Uh, Harvey dog has been a little more active here in this fourth round compared to the other rounds. They're trying to mix it up on the inside. And Robert Easton Jr. pushes off Ryan Martin. And now he starts to unload combinations. Back comes Ryan Martin. They both are engaging on the inside. And Martin has that left arm of Robert Easton Jr. Easter has the left arm of Ryan Martin. They both had each other's left arm for a brief moment as they were hammering away upon one another. But now it's becoming a war of wills between these two. There's a chopping right hand by Easter. Back comes Ryan Martin. Double left hook by Robert Easter Jr. Grazing shots. A shot on the left ear by Ryan Martin. Keep him up, Robert. Stop, stop. Those punches up. So the action is intensifying here in this fourth round. Good body work by Ryan Martin. As we near the end of the fourth. Well, Ryan Martin Jr. said in regards to this fight, I'm focused, my mind is clear. This fight right here gets me excited. We're two Ohio fighters with history. I've got a chip on my shoulder. I'm going to put on an action-packed fight, and I'm going to bring it. I'm not really surprised that Easter says he doesn't see much difficult in fighting me. I kind of expected him to say that Easter is Easter. From what I gathered from that statement from Ryan Martin, he believes that Robert Easter Jr., and I'm literally reading between the lines that he feels like Easter is a bit cocky, borderline arrogant is what I got from Ryan Martin's comments. Both guys have known each other since they were youngsters. Coming up in the state of Ohio, Martin from Akron, 
Easter from Toledo. Easter had two homecoming fights where he drew over 7,000 each time. They were raucous crowds. The referee will separate the two. There's a nice right hand on the left side of the temple of Robert Easter Jr. Harvey Doc warning about the elbows. Now Martin stepping to Easter with the jab. Jab snaps back the head of Ryan Martin. Good jab there by Robert Easter Jr. Easter's just using his jab now like a piston-like jab. Snapping back Ryan Martin's head. A jab followed by that right hand that got through. Martin sort of waiting on the outside. Right now, Robert Easter Jr. is out working Ryan Martin. In the center of the ring, he's going to using his distance, boxing, popping that jab, being active. 80 seconds left here in the fifth, the right hand, and then he gets out of the way, circles to his right, does Easter. So Easter is trying to showcase multiple facets of his game, using his pure boxing, imploring the jab followed by the right hand, and staying out of the way of Ryan Martin. In the third and fourth round, he wanted to mix it up on the inside with Martin and do some body work. And now Martin's coming forward, but Easter is the more active of the two. There's a jab that stopped Martin in his tracks. He steps in with the left hook, does Easter. There's a nice right hand, a scorching right hand by Easter. Easter's having a very good round here in the fifth. The right hand there by Easter. Boy, Easter looks sharp here in our fifth stanza. And Martin seems a bit flat-footed as Easter boxing on his toes, moving around the ring well. As we head towards round six, this one's scheduled for 12. Taking a look at, there's a nice right hand smashing through the guard of Ryan Martin. There's a left followed by that right hand by Robert Easter Jr. Said all right. Agree. You see what you're doing? He already Great. doing this way on the one Drink shot. Drink the next one, right? Drink the next one. Okay, now let's work. Just like you were just doing. Keep boxing yeah. and working. You're going to break him down. He's going to break him down. You're hitting him with the one twos. Do not throw that right hand like that. Keep it straight. Don't raise it. And more jabs there by Robert Easter Jr. Seconds out. Seconds out. We well, heard the father of Robert Easter Jr. telling him, keep using your jabs. He's waiting on that one shot. I think that's very good implicit instruction by Robert Easter Sr. to his son. A good jab by Robert Easter Jr. They're both in close distance. Round six, this one is scheduled for 12. There's the jab followed by that right hand by Robert Easter Jr. Double left hook by Easter. Nice right hand by the former IBF lightweight champion of the world. The right hand on the top of the head of Ryan Martin. Punch stat numbers, percentage of total punches landed and thrown through five. Easter, 28% connect percentage. Martin, 17% connect percentage. And now Martin looking to close the distance. Easter ties him up. RV Doc steps between the two, and they will go back to work. Cut 
Well, the trainers of Ryan Martin are telling him, urging him, cut off the ring. We are just over the halfway point of the sixth. They're saying, don't just follow him, cut off the ring. A double jam by Ryan Martin. Easter remaining very confident and comfortable in the center of the squared circle. And the jab just knocking back the head of Brian Martin. Just a pestering jab for Robert Easter Jr. under a minute to go here in the sixth. Jab that snapped the head back of Ryan Martin. There's a nice right hand connecting upon Ryan Martin. We head towards the end of the sixth between Robert Easter Jr. and Ryan Martin as Easter connects with the hard right hand to end the first half of the fight. And there is Otto Valin, who had a victory over Travis Kaufman, his only loss to the Gypsy King Tyson Fury. He will be in action in our co-main event coming up next against Dominic Trumbull Brazil. Dominic Brazil looking to get back in the win column. He hasn't been inside the ring since dating back to May of 2019. He was knocked out by Deontay Wilder in the first round. Dominic Brazil in action against Otto Valin coming up in our co-main event. That is up next. Seconds out. Round seven, this one is scheduled for 12. As we are here at 140 pounds, coming up next, the heavyweights will be center stage with Dominic Brazil and Otto Valin. And uh, ringside observers have Robert Easter Jr. ahead, 59-55. Again, that is an unofficial scorecard. Harvey Dock will step between the two. There's a nice right hand by Robert Easter Jr. We'll see if Ryan Martin can start to cut off the ring and hammer away upon the body of Robert Easter Jr. because Easter seems to be content to stay on the outside. At times he mixes it up on the inside, but it is being dictated by what he wants to do. Ryan Martin has not made Robert Easter Jr. uncomfortable at any point of this fight. And that is a problem for somebody when you are fighting Robert Easter Jr. who is all about getting into his rhythm. And Easter is showcasing more of his boxing skill. I mean, his confidence is growing in this fight, as you can tell. He has good defense here against Ryan Martin. And Martin's chasing him down, but he's got to throw. He's got to be able to, you know, push Easter against the ropes, hammer away on the body, and go to work. There's the jab to the chest of Robert Easter Jr. Let's see if Martin can pick up the intensity. Triple jab by the former champion of the world in Robert Easter. Under a minute left here in the seventh. There's a left hook by Robert Easter Jr. Easter so comfortable and confident right now using his length and his reach High ring IQ as well. Ryan Martin seems half a step slow. 
Under 30 seconds remaining here in the seventh. There's a nice right hand by Robert Easter Jr. Combination there by Martin, but he just ate a right hand as he advanced forward. And we head towards the eighth here at Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino. You just gave him a fight. And you give him a fight. You're not doing anything we worked on, man. You're taking jabs on top of jabs. There's no feints. There's no nothing. Is he that much better than you? You ain't doing nothing, man. You're just taking punches to the face, man. I can't be any clearer. Some coaches come and they want to rub your back. I'm telling you straight out. You, you, you're losing the fight. Where's your face? Where's your jab? Close the distance. You're not doing anything. Throw with him, man. The no nonsense. Mark Parade. Well, the trainer of Ryan Martin pretty much being as brutally honest as I've ever heard a trainer tell his fighter. He said, you're not doing anything right. Is he that much better than you? I'm not going to just come and rub your back and say you're doing okay or doing well. I mean, that was as brutal honesty as you will ever find in a prize fight. We'll see if that sets a fire underneath Ryan Martin. Well, we'll see if Martin comes out with a sense of urgency because it is clear that the corner of Ryan Martin is not happy with what they have seen from their fighter. There's a right hand to the body by Ryan Martin. Now he's unloading. Okay, now he's trying to make Robert Easter Jr. uncomfortable. Some body work there by Ryan Martin and overhand right. We'll see if Martin can come out and really start to gain some steam and uh, generate some momentum. Right hand on the top by Ryan Martin. Punches thrown and landed through seven. Easter 19 of 54, Martin 9 of 49. That was in the seventh round. There's a nice right hand by Easter. We're at the halfway point of the eighth. Hey, don't forget on social media, follow us at Premier Boxing, also at SBR Flores. There's a nice left hook followed by a right by Easter Jr. Harvey Dock watching the action. Martin's got to let his hands go in this close distance. Easter is putting his body upon the Akron, Ohio native. Under a minute left. There's a left hook that connected by Easter. Martin's got the left arm of Robert Easter Jr. And now Martin letting his hands go, hiding away on the body, followed by coming over the top. Under a minute left here in the eighth round, we're headed towards the final 20 seconds of this eighth round. All well, right, Martin showing a better account of himself here in the eighth, but is it enough to get the round and swing it into his favor on the judges' scorecards? On to the ninth. And Robert Easter Jr. has a cut over his eye. We'll see when that took place. Just that round. <laughs> Might be this sequence. Well, there is its 
believe the cut is above the left eye. Yes, the cut is above the left eye of Robert Easter Jr. Could it have been because of a clash of heads? Might have been then. Might have been then when that cut occurred on Robert Easter Jr. Cut outside of the left eye. He's got Levi Hicks in his corner. Levi, an outstanding cut man who's been with Adrian Broner for a very long time. Total punches landed through eight. Easter 112 of 371, 30% connect percentage. E Martin 85 of 428 for a 19% connect percentage. So both men have thrown Martin over 400 punches. Easter close to 400 punches thrown. We'll see if Ryan Martin can start to pick up the pace here as we are into the ninth round. Double jab by Easter, but back comes Martin. Martin fighting with more of a sense of urgency and looking to close the distance against the former lightweight champion of the world. Corner of Ryan Martin telling him, you have to come forward. They are imploring him, come forward. But I think it's not just about coming forward, it's about jabbing first to give Easter something to think about. And then you cut off the distance and hammer away on the body and drive him to the ropes and start to unload your heavy power shots. It's not just about following him around. I mean, that's one item that Martin is doing that I think is a very much a boxy no-no. He's following around Robert Easter Jr. Easter's moving to his left using his boxing ability, but Martin's got to jab his way on the inside and start to cut off the ring and not allow Easter to circle to his left. He's got to cut him off at some point and start to hammer away on the body. If you're Easter, I just keep circling to my left, using my jab, and now that's okay. So he cut him off and Easter went to the right. It's about disrupting the rhythm if you're Ryan Martin, under a minute to go here in the ninth. And that's something that Martin has been unable to do here in the fight. And if you're Easter, keep using your jab, popping away at the jab, mixing up where you're placing the jab, the head, the abdomen, mixing up the right hand, circling to your left. If Martin's gonna give that to you, then by all means, take it. Why do you want to make it a hard night at the office if you're Easter? And now Martin's trying to cut off Easter going to his left, so Easter will circle to his right. And if you notice, when Easter circles to his right, he isn't throwing with as much frequency because he's not used to that. It's something that is he isn't as accustomed to doing. On to the 10th. Robert Easter Jr. said, during COVID, it really slowed me down and being off for all that time and never knowing when I would get that call to get back in the ring. So I really had to focus up and I had to be ready whenever I was given that phone call. It motivated me. Plus, I had to look over my son to make sure he was all right. So it really put a different drive in me. This pandemic really set everything back, but we're more than ready. So Robert Easter Jr. with a big opportunity here. You don't have to go inside. Yeah, no. right. yeah. Keep boxing them from the outside. Keep walking with the jab. You hear me? I got you. Bro, don't stretch that pop and telling them that you don't stick to the outside. Keep that jab. You don't have to go in. You know he's going to be on the outside, right? So we are on to the 10th round. This one is scheduled for 12, a super lightweight matchup between Robert Easter Jr. and Ryan Martin. Double jab there by Robert Easter Jr. We'll see if Martin can still work on cutting off the ring, closing the distance. 
Jones. Jab by Martin. There's a right hand by Ryan Martin. Good stiff jab by the former IBF lightweight champion of the world. Now Martin closing off the distance. We're at the halfway point of the 10th as Ryan Martin is trying to get back in this fight against Robert Easter Jr. But Easter just continues to jab, circle to his left, and just do what he does. Step back, step back. Now he ties up with Ryan Martin. There's a nice right hand by Robert Easter Jr. There's a left hook that found its destination for Robert Easter Jr. under a minute to go here in the 10th. Oh, there's a left hook. Then momentarily, I don't know if Easter was staggered or if he was off balance. I would bet on the fact that he was off balance. A right hand by Robert Easter Jr. and Martin. Trying to close the distance. He's been unable to do that here tonight against Robert Easter Jr. And the corner of Ryan Martin says, come on, man, let's go. They are so frustrated with the uh, Akron, Ohio native, now living in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're heading towards the 11th. There's a jam got, that got through the guard. Pet Brain Easter. Time. We're headed towards the 11th. Solid, stiff jab. That's what I need. I need, swap. I need you to start shooting a pistol jab now. I'm going to these later rounds. Let's go, man. Mm -hmm. You got it. Okay? Got you. Keep working. Breathe, just breathe. like that, all right? Breathe. Okay? Breathe. Keep working just like that. I got you. Breathe. Don't be stopping. If you stop, go back to the I got you. Yeah. Seconds out. Well, I like the instruction that Robert Easter Jr.'s father told him. He said, don't stop. He goes, keep being active. And this is the fact that Easter, I think, is ahead comfortably on the scorecards. But, you know, they're telling Easter, listen, keep doing your thing, keep being active, stick the jab in his face, circle to your left, use the right hand occasionally. But if I'm Robert Easter Sr., I am thrilled with how my son is looking. Now, would you like to stop it? Obviously, but Ryan Martin's a tough guy. You know, he's only been, his only loss came a stoppage at the hands of Josh Taylor. But it's still the fact that, you know, you don't want to make your, put yourself in a vulnerable position, especially if you don't have to. And Easter is boxing well. The key to boxing and the combat sports hit and don't get hit. And right now, Robert Easter Jr. isn't taking much punishment. You know, if he wins over a good named fighter in Ryan Martin, who's got a quality record, you know, you move up the rankings here at 140. And the fact that Easter's been away from the ring since October of 2019, and has been away from the ring for, you know, close to 16 months 
Do you want to shake off that ring rust? You know, I, I know some guys don't believe in ring rust, but I'm a believer as we're over that way mark of the 11th that there is such a thing as ring rust. And for Easter, he's gone out there, he's gotten into his rhythm, he's, he's relying on his pure boxing skill, he's mixed it up on the inside when he's wanted to, he's dictated the pace and the tempo of this fight. All in all, I think they should be delighted with how Easter's looking, the hand speed clearly in his favor. And Martin just seems to have weights on his ankles because he has been unable to close the distance, bridge the gap whatsoever, and have much sustained offense over the course of this fight. Very rarely has Martin been able to cut off Easter going to his left. And also Easter's been dealing with he cut outside of the left eye, but that hasn't affected him one bit. There's the right hand of the body by Ryan Martin. It's been a clinical-like performance is what I would describe Robert Easter Jr.'s outing tonight, especially here at 140. We got one more run remaining. It has been... Pretty much all Robert Easter Jr. over Ryan Martin as we got the 12th and final round upcoming. This is it, man, 12th round. I'm not going to tell you to do anything. Everything you worked on, we worked on cutting the ring, worked on chasing this guy. You didn't do nothing for 11 rounds, man. The only chance you got now is a, is, is a fucking knockout. So in order for you, you to do that. You got to touch him up last round. In order for you to do that, you got to do everything I've been asking you to do for the past 11 rounds. So I don't know how you're going to do in the 12th, but you got to get to him. You got to close this. You got to stop following him. Seconds out. I'm ring to Ryan. I'm ring to Robert. Just touch him up. Just touch him up. Good. Good. Box! Twelfth and fight around here in this super lightweight matchup between Robert Easter Jr. and Ryan Martin. Well, Robert Easter Jr. I think has looked fantastic tonight. Round 11 punches landed. Easter 12 of 34, Martin 12 of 50. Easter a 35% connect percentage, Martin 24% connect percentage. Ryan Martin just has been a little bit slow on the trigger where Robert Easter Jr. has been using that jab and it has been connecting and really pestering and influencing the rhythm of Ryan Martin. And also the fact that Easter is circling well to his left, using the right hand occasionally. Earlier in the fight, he mixed it up on the inside to show that he could do that against Ryan Martin. And unless Martin gets anything miraculous, it will likely be a unanimous decision for Robert Easter Jr. We're just over the halfway mark of this 12th and a final round here from Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino. They call it the Fight Sphere. Double jab there by Martin. There's a nice jab followed by a right hand by Robert Easter Jr. And the jab to the abdomen by Easter. 
Flair is a good right hand. That blasted Ryan Martin. Final 30 seconds of what has been a clinical-like performance for Robert Easter Jr., who will likely and should improve his record to 23-1-1. One one. Back after a long layoff of nearly 16 months for Robert Easter Jr., 30 years of age from Toledo, Ohio, former IBF lightweight champion of the world, looking to pick up this W over Ryan Martin. And that'll end hey. the fight here from Mohegan Sun. They both embrace, and I sign of respect, but Easter Jr. looked terrific as he likely handled business against Ryan Martin. Just awaiting the punch stat numbers to come across so that we can provide you with the numbers. As Robert Easter Jr., I thought, won handily. And who would I like to see Robert Easter Jr. fight? Well, look, 140 is a, without question, a young, hungry division. It doesn't matter who you put him in there with in Robert Easter Jr., but he's still a name and only one loss on his resume, that being to Mikey Garcia. <laughs> Robert Easter Jr. say we need some ring girls. We want some motivation during the fight. See, that's how... That is how uh, uneventful uh, his opposition was when he's more concerned about where the ring girl's were than what his opponent was for Ryan Martin. I mean, just goes to show you that Easter was in total control of this fight. So Robert Easter Jr. looking to elevate his record to 23-1-1. One and one. Ryan Martin, obviously, will likely be disappointed with his outing tonight. So with this fight, Robert Easter Jr. He is now campaigning here at 140. The former IBF lightweight champ of the world. This is his third fight here at, or his second fight at 140, I stand corrected. His last fight was against Adrian Granados at 140 pounds. And we are just awaiting uh, the decision here from the um, judges as Jimmy Lennon is standing by. Race pleasantries do Robert Easter Jr. No bad blood. And now here's Jimmy Lennon Jr.
Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, the judges are in agreement. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Frank Lombardi, scores about 117 to 111. Judges John McKay and Tom Carasone both scored about 118 to 110, all three in favor of the winner. By unanimous decision, Robert Easter Jr. So Robert Easter Jr. victorious across the board over Ryan Martin.